This uncommon condition results in genitals that aren't obviously male or female. When a child is born with ambiguous genitalia, they might have underdeveloped sex organs or have both male and female characteristics. The outward appearance of the genitals won't necessarily match the child's genetic sex or internal sex organs. This condition is a sex development disorder, not a disease, that is fairly apparent at birth or soon after. If the sex of a child isn't obvious, it can be tested in order to give parents insight into how to care for their child. Ambiguous genitalia happens to one in every 1,000 to 4,500 babies. The biggest sign that a child has ambiguous genitalia is that their external sex organs don't look like a standard penis or vagina. Other ambiguous genitalia symptoms include Imbalanced hormones Early, late, or absent menstruation Lack of a urethral, opening at the end of the penis, or hypospadias a typical genitalia could look different in every case, depending on which sex chromosomes have been affected. In females, uncertain genitalia could present itself as larger than normal clitoris that resembles a tiny penis, a urethral opening in an abnormal spot, fused labia or labia that resemble a scrotum, a pocket of tissue inside the labia that could be mistaken for testicles and a scrotum in males, uncertain genitalia, could present itself as. A penis that never forms is tiny or resembles a large clitoris. A urethral opening at the base of the penis, not at the tip. A little, open scrotum that could be mistaken for labia. Testicles that don't descend depending on when genital development gets interrupted and what caused it, Symptoms can be more or less severe. It's possible to detect this condition before a child has been born, but it won't be confirmed until a healthcare provider is able to examine the child in person. Your child's healthcare provider will want to know about your baby's familial medical history, if possible. Depending on the severity of the condition, you may receive a quick diagnosis or you might need to wait for test results like blood tests to assess chromosomes and hormone levels. Imaging tests like X-rays, ultrasounds, or MRI scans. Laparoscopies or biopsies to check out tissue taken from the sex organs ambiguous genitalia causes generally revolve around interrupted development of developing sex organs. For example, insufficient male hormones for a fetus that's genetically male or the presence of male hormones for a fetus that is genetically female. Specific genes that have mutated and influenced sex development. Abnormalities in a fetus chromosomes, like an absent or extra chromosome, it's possible that a child's family history affects the development of their genitalia. A large number of sex development disorders happen due to genetic abnormalities that are inherited. If a fetus has a family history of any of the following, they're at a higher risk of atypical genitalia. Death during infancy without a cause. Difficulty getting pregnant, lack of menstruation, and extra facial hair for females. Abnormal genitals. Irregular physical maturation during puberty. Inherited genetic disorders that mess up the adrenal glands, also called congenital adrenal hyperplasia. If you want to have a baby but have a family history that includes these conditions, Speak to a specialist or seek genetic counseling to find out what your best course of action is someone with ambiguous genitalia might experience difficulty getting pregnant and an increased chance of getting certain kinds of cancer, in addition to their primary condition, ambiguous genitalia treatment starts by determining the cause of the condition. After they determine the cause, your child's health care provider will help you figure out a treatment plan and a sex assignment. You might need to meet with specialists like a neonatologist, a geneticist, an endocrinologist, a surgeon, a urologist, a psychologist. The team of healthcare providers will support you as you decide the best way to approach your child's condition, sexual function, gender identity, and chances for fertility in the long term. You might be looking at hormone replacement therapy or reconstructive surgery.
you might need to consider surgery when your child is still an infant if it's medically important, like the absence of a urethral opening. If you're concerned about cosmetic appearance, you may decide to wait on surgery until your child can decide for themselves treatment for ambiguous genitalia has many layers. In addition to the factors mentioned above, you should keep your child's emotional health at the top of your priority list.